So I'm going to talk about my experience with learning analytics and sort of what I wanted out of it and my various experiences. So learning analytics, I just got this definition off of a teaching website to introduce everybody to it. So it's basically, since students, face everything they do online is tracked, although they don't seem to know that, um, that we can pretty much look at every keystroke, is that can we use their keystrokes or digital footprints to determine if they're succeeding in a class or predict their success in a class um, based on how they use the resources that are available to them. So a few years ago, I was approached by people at Do It to get involved with this learning analytics program called the Student Success System, or S3. And um, there were people in various campuses around Wisconsin who were involved in this and went to some seminars on this and got this put up on my website. And I was interested because I was wondering, I teach very large classes in zoology, so I teach Zoology 101, which has an enrollment of about 800 to 900 students a semester. And so I have two very large sections. And to try to figure out how every student is doing is sometimes, not sometimes, it is always very challenging. And I will, you know, I look through the grade book and I try to identify students who were not doing well on exams, contact them, they often wouldn't get back to me, um, and that a lot of times didn't make any difference. So with this sort of thing, and eventually if it was student facing, if they could see some digital thing saying, hey, you're at risk, would they pay more attention to that than to me? Um, so basically I liked it because it would help me track, uh, perhaps help me track student progress so there's an instructor facing part. If it was working, we could have the student facing part so they could see it. It was supposed to like show if students were succeeding at risk or failing. So there were sort of three categories. Um, it would allow me to track student interaction with online materials. I have a pretty developed um, D2L course where I put lots and lots of materials on there. I tell the students they don't have to use everything, they need to figure out what fits best with their learning styles and so on. But did, did, their inter did they interact and did it help? Um, was there an impact if they actually looked at this stuff? So uh, we went with S3 and um, there was a graduate student who was working very hard on this project with, with S3 and she made models um, of my historical classes because I had been using um, the learning management system here at UW for, since I've been here since 2004. And so there was lots of data and student grades. So she, the best model was just basically based on past students' grades and their grades as they went through the course predicted how they would do. So we used that to do this um, um, modeling and basically the predictions made no sense. And James was sitting back there knows I'd have to fill out a, a, a survey pretty much every week and I'd be like, it doesn't make sense again, because I'd see students who were failing, or, or, or it clump all the students together, and you know they were all doing fine when I knew some weren't, and it would put failing students as passing, and so on. So I, didn't, I had meant to take this off, but that was my own. <laughs> so what's going on here? Um, so basically what I ended up doing is I still track student progress through the grade book, because I have it set up so that A's are blue and B's are green, and so on, so I can easily see color and follow and see who's at risk. So um, about a year ago, James um, back there came and talked to me about this new analytics um, program, this analytics and recommendation. And so we put that on my um, D2L site last semester. Last semester I didn't use it very much. Things, I was very busy, I did extra teaching and didn't really get into it. And this semester we put it on there again and so I've been using it a little bit more. And so what I wanted, from this, my hope for this was to be able to help struggling students because really we do have students who struggle in my class. It's a big lecture, but as I said, it's a big lecture. Also we have discussions, but they're optional. So many of the students who should be going to the optional discussion sections don't go and they need intervention. And it's, I only have three TAs and it's hard for me to manage all the, all the students and give them everything they need. So I was hoping that could help me identify students and give them some data if they came and talked to me to help counsel them and show them what they could do. I mean, I have an idea and I can tell them things to do, but it's like my kids, they don't always listen to what my wonderful suggestions. And also, would this help student learning? So if what, from what I learned on this, would this help me better the student learning? And also, can this help me in terms of tracking some students and some of the things they're telling me they do, which then I later find out they don't. So I'm gonna go through with my attempts to help struggling students, help the student learning and help myself. So identifying struggling students. So there's a tab on here that I can push that looks at students 
predicted grades. Um, basically, these are the estimated grades right here. So I took the names off right here. So I'm like, oh, let's see how students are doing. Um, if you look at these predicted grades right here, I'm a terrible instructor. I don't do anything right because half of my students are failing or getting D's right here, according to these predicted grades. When I went back to the grade book and looked at their actual grades, you will see that most of them are different. Okay? The student who's predicted to get an F is actually getting an A. Okay? The student who's predicted to get, get a D is actually getting a B. So this is only facing me. It's not facing the students, which is good because I would have a bunch of students freaking out. Um, and um, also if it goes the other way around, I could have students who are possibly getting a D and they think they're getting an A because of these predictions. Now I, my understanding, and James, you can tell me if I'm wrong about this, is that these predictions are based on how often the students interact with the materials in my course. And it's, it's not based on the, the actual grades that they're getting now. So clearly some students you know, don't need to do much interaction with the course and they're still doing fine. Um, because I do put lots of materials on there. So this as a predictor for my class is not uh, something that I can use. The grade book works a lot better. Um, so also in terms of, but in terms of helping struggling students, so I had a student coming in and he, he's, he was a transfer student and he's failing the class right now and he wants to know what he can do. So I can pull this kind of thing up and show him how his participation is relative to other classmates. Um, so basically, the pink is low participation and the um, yellow is medium participation. Now with the caveat that I know that for some people, interacting with the class materials doesn't matter with their grades. For some people, it does. But I can show him that in these categories of things we have online, that his participation is pretty low in most things. And maybe he should start watching the videos that are online. Maybe he should start looking at the lecture notes that are there, and so on. Now, sometimes the students that come in and talk with me about this, they, it, it doesn't matter what I say. And, and he wasn't, you know, he couldn't do any of these things because he just couldn't. Um, some of them hopefully will take this kind of thing to heart and say, okay, I see that students who are succeeding are doing more of these things. There's another breakdown on here that shows what a, how much A students, B students, and C students on average interact as well. Um, for this particular student who I showed this to, I can actually track it pretty much just as well looking at, in D2L, there's a way to track student progress. So I can open up the content on my website and look and see how often he's interacted with various modules right here, like he never looked at anything about molecules before the first exam. That indicates to me that he's probably not gonna do very well on that part of the class. And here I can look at the times that he looked at these things and how often he looked at these things. So that, to me, that was just as powerful as using the analytics. Um, so and that's, that's it, helping student learning. Um, I I'm, I'm hope, there is, I think that there is, um, ways that the learning analytics can help student learning if they're willing to take some of this information and put it to use. Now, in terms of helping myself, um, a couple things. How many and when are students using a specific resource? So one story I have of this is I always put sample tests online and I put them online very early in the module where we do um, the exams. And I tell students often to look at them Last year, one of the few times I did use the learning analytics, I went online like a couple days before the test and saw that about 30% of the students had actually even looked at the sample test. And when I ask questions on the regular test, they're exactly the same and they miss them. I can go back and be like, seriously, people. So mm -hmm. I, I talked with the class about that and I told them that data. The second test, more people looked at it. Um, whether that helped or not, I don't know. I don't have a control to be able to do that. But I can tell them the resources that I believe are very useful, um, whether the, a, the whole group of people are looking at them. I can't do this on D2L, I can't look at that mass data like this. Um, the other thing in terms of helping myself is um, I, have, I have some online stuff and I always have students who, uh, that, you know, they, they come in and tell me that they did submit their quiz, they did submit their assignment and so on. And, I need to let them have another, you know, it's not their fault, it's not there. So I know I completed and submitted a quiz. I can look at the analytics. I can also look at D2L and see that, um, whether they did that or not. But one of the things is when students put assignments in a Dropbox, 
I, every time we have an assignment, I have students say that they know they put something in a Dropbox, they know they were on there, but it's not there, so can I please submit it later? On D2L, I can't assess whether they interacted with the Dropbox, but on the learning analytics, I can. It says there's zero interactions, and so I can go back and show them this data. And so some students are like, okay, and other students then open a case with do it because they're gonna prove to me that they actually did interact with the Dropbox. So my experience have been things that have been helpful about the analytics and recommendation. Um, there are things that it's easier just to use D2L in the gradebook. But we were talking the other day when we were getting ready for this. It's like, so for learning analytics in Canvas, which won't be the same as what I just showed you, what kinds of things would be useful to have in Canvas for us to be able to use? I would like to see something that had predictions that were based on grades plus a combination of interactions <coughs> with the course. I think I would need to sit down with someone and figure out if we could um, highlight the materials that I thought were important for everyone to look at and separate those from the things that are just there. It's like, oh, if you're a visual learner, use these, these videos. If you like reading better, use these articles. Um, I like the ability to look at the overall interactions that I found in the analytics and recommendation, like in just a big subset of data and say, out of 850 students, 200 looked at that sample test by the night before the, you know, more than two days before the exam. So I like that bulk data. And then I do like the interactions with, being able to track the interactions with the Dropbox, and I hope we could see that on Canvas as well. So that's the end of what I have to say. And I, we were, um, when we were talking about the interactive exercise, I think our hope was to just sort of get a conversation going about what people think would be useful in this analytics on Canvas and sort of in learning and teaching in general. But any questions?